Delaware Tech, Chem 100, Chem 110, Unit 1 continued, significant figures or sig figs. Sig figs are the digits in a number that have meaningful contribution to its measurement resolution. In other words, the, the digits in a number that actually mean something, that you can actually trust. And that's typically all of the quote-unquote certain digits, the ones you absolutely know for sure, plus the last digit that would be estimated when you're using some type of instrument to measure something. For instance, you're using a meter stick and it's marked in tenths of a meter, so you know something is greater than, than a certain number of meters and you know it's greater than a certain number of tenths of a meter. Those you know for sure. And then if you're reading between the lines, that, that would be your estimated last digit. Typically, your eyeball can separate two lines on a ruler or some measuring instrument into 10 pieces, and that last one that you estimate, that sort of uncertain digit, is considered still significant because you made your best guess as to what that number is. So it's the number of digits that you can actually trust in a measurement. So there's very specific rules about what is considered a significant digit and what is not considered once someone gives you an actual measured value. The first rule is that if they've given you a measured value, any digit that is not zero, in other words, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, those are going to be significant. In other words, if I gave you the number 897, all three of those numbers are sig figs, are significant figures. So it has three sig figs. Trapped zeros, in other words, zeros that are stuck between non-zero numbers, 207, 0 0.508, those zeros are in the middle between two non-zero numbers. They're always counted as significant. So the rule of thumb is uh, any zero between non-zero numbers is, a, is counted. And the reason for that is when you look at a, a number that has a lot of digits in it, there is going to be a first significant digit and there's going to be a last and everything in between is significant. We don't have two groups of significant digits within a single number. It's always a single string of digits. And in each of these examples, these are three sig figs. If a decimal is present, the right side trailing zeros, in other words, zeros that are on the right side of a, a decimal place or the right side of a non-zero digit that's already past the decimal, those will count. So in 43.0, we count that zero because it was important enough to write, therefore it must have been significant. Uh, 0 0.500, uh, the first zero is there really for, for uh, looks more than anything. It's considered good form. Uh, it's not considered a significant digit. So the 0 .500, all three of those would be considered significant. And you can think of it this way. If it was important enough to write and you didn't need to write it, well, then it must have been significant. Placekeeper zeros. These are zeros that absolutely have to be there to make the number correct. These are not necessarily significant digits. So examples of that left leading zeros on the right side of a decimal place. So when we say trailing zeros and leading zeros, we're only talking about the ones on the right side of the decimal. So in this case, 0 0.000217, those three zeros on the right of the decimal place, they're place keepers. They're telling you where to start writing the 217. They have to be there. You have no choice and they don't add to the quality of your measurement. They're there merely to tell you which decimal place to start writing your non-zero significant digits. Now you'll notice I said quality of the measurement and not accuracy of my measurement or preci precision of the measurement. And this is because in science, accuracy and precision have very specific meanings that we've actually already discussed in a previous video. Now looking to the second number, if you wrote 0743 and you simply meant 743, you still do not count that zero as significant. Again, it's a placekeeper. It's filling in the thousands place in that number. So each of these examples 
would also be three significant digits, and therefore because you don't count the left side leading zeros. If a decimal is absent, the right side trailing zeros, in other words, we're talking about on the other side of the decimal place when a number is written without a decimal place. Uh, these trailing zeros are not significant. So 1,300, again, these two zeros are not adding to the quality of your measurement. In other words, you can think of this as about 1,300. It's closer to 1,300 than it is to 1,200 or 1,400. Therefore, these are only two significant digits, and we don't count those two zeros. They are placekeepers. They are there to fill in the ones place and the tens place because you need something in there, and they were filled with zeros. They are not significant. Now, these are obviously a lot of rules, so I tried to condense a few of the rules into one rule. And here's my one rule that covers several of these rules you just saw. If trailing or leading zeros, in other words, not a trap zero. Trap zeros are always significant. But if you have trailing or leading zeros that are written and they weren't necessary, then they must have been significant. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, another way to say that would be if someone wrote it and they didn't have to. In other words, if you didn't write that zero and the number had exactly the same value, at least to a calculator, well, then it must have been important. It must have been significant. And let's look at a couple examples of something like that. I'm going to write a couple numbers here. Um, 0 0.004500. And we'll also write another number here. Uh, 98,000. Okay. Well, if we look at this first number here, these three zeros... They have to be there. Without those zeros, if I started writing four, five, zero, zero without them, I would get a very different number, 4,500, which is nowhere near the same as 0 0.004500. Those zeros had to be there. They are placekeepers. But if I took out these two zeros, I would get a number that, at least according to a calculator, or if you were in math class, would have exactly the same value. But we're not in math class, we're in science classes, uh, the, and, and science, we think of these as measurements, not as exact values, unless we're told they're exact values, and therefore uh, the numbers have certain number of significant figures, and you have to keep track of the zeros. But it's, since these zeros didn't need to be there to convey exactly the same value, well, then they must have been important to write. There must have been a reason to write these other zeros. And the reason is this. You must have had, or somebody must have had, a good enough measuring device that they were so sure that after they wrote the five, the next digit was a zero, and the next digit that was estimated, since it's the last sig fig, it's always the estimated one, that they estimated the next digit was a zero, too. It gave extra information. It made it a higher quality measurement. And therefore, all four of these digits are significant. The last two zeros are significant, but the first three are just placekeepers. Now look at the next number, 98,000. Well, if I took out those zeros, I would get 98. Clearly a completely different number. So you can ask yourself whenever you're rounding numbers or you're looking at sig figs uh, and you take the zeros out or you change it, uh, like this, if it's a different number, well, then they must have, they had to be there. You had no choice, and therefore these are placekeepers, and they are not adding to the quality of your measurement. So we have a couple more rules. There's an unofficial rule, and it's unofficial because no one made it official, um, but it's a rule that almost everybody in the world uses, so we're going to use it too and treat it as an important rule. And the rule is this, if a decimal point, so in other words, the actual little dot, appears at the end of an integer, at the end of a whole number, that could be positive or negative, that's what an integer is, um, it makes every zero before that decimal uh, significant. In other words, if I wrote 200, zero, zero, 200, well, that has one significant figure. What does that mean? That means that if I wrote the number 200, all it meant was that I was able to measure something 
to the nearest hundred and no better than that. In other words, I knew it was closer to 200 than it was to 300 or going down 100, 100. And that's all the information it told me. But once I put the 200 zero, zero and put a decimal place after it, now that gives me extra information. It tells me I trusted the zero and I was pretty sure that last zero. In other words, I believe that this number was closer to 200 than it was to 201 or 199. So while the value of the number is exactly the same, they're both 200, the information is very different because I have a much higher quality measurement with the second version. In other words, I've narrowed down what my actual value is. Whereas in the first case, I really haven't narrowed it down by much at all. I've added to the quality of my measurement because all three digits are significant. Now you notice, in the first case, we only have one sig fig. And in the sec second case, we have three sig figs. And you might be asking, well, how do I write it with two sig figs? Well, the fact is, when you're writing these things in decimal format, in other words, just normal numbers, uh, sometimes you can't show uh, some zeros as being significant and other zeros not being. There's no way for me to write 200 and to show that I trust the first zero, but I don't trust the second zero. Uh, you can do this in scientific notation, and I'll talk about that in a second, uh, but you can't do it in decimal. So if you did have the number 200 and you wanted to show it was two significant digits, you could just make a mental note. You would write it as if it only had one, but you have to remember that it actually had two. So the next rule is scientific notation. And in scientific notation, we use exactly the same rule. So there's actually no new rule here. There's no new rule. You only look at the coefficient in any scientific notation. You never look at the power of 10, because that's essentially your placekeeper zeros, which we already know are not significant. So you're only looking at the coefficient. And you'll notice if, if the coefficient is always a number between 1 and just less than 10, then all the digits that are written must be significant, even if they're zeros, because they're after the decimal point, and therefore um, uh, they add to the quality of the measurement. So the general rule of thumb, without even thinking, is any number in scientific notation in the coefficient is automatically significant. What that also means is that when you're writing, when you're converting a number like 200, to scientific notation, since only one of these is significant, you would only write the 2 times 10 to the 2 for that. But if you're writing 200 and you had a decimal point, meaning all three digits are significant, well, then you have to show the zeros in your scientific notation. And now you see these two values have the same, or exactly the same value, but there's new information here. I trust those two digits they're shown. And you'll notice now we have a way of showing one zero. We can't do it with decimal. There's no way to show it with a decimal. Well, I'm not even going to write that. But there is a way to show it with scientific notation. I just put one zero there. And that means I trust the first zero, but I don't trust the second. In other words, I have two significant, I would have two sig figs in that number. And the last rule is for counted numbers or defined values. What do I mean by that? Well, counted numbers, you're literally, if you're counting things, if you're counting objects or people, and you're getting an exact count, four people, seven houses, 97 atoms, exactly 120 eggs. In other words, you had exactly 10 dozen, you bought 10 dozen eggs at the market. Uh, each, each dozen obviously has 12 eggs. So, 10 boxes would have exactly 120 eggs. So these numbers look like they have one or two sig figs in each of them, but in fact, they are exact numbers. So they have infinite sig figs. And what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is if you counted four people in the room, you're not estimating that it's four, that it's somewhere between three and five, and your best estimate was a was a 4, and maybe there are 3.9 people in the room, or 4.2 people in the room. No, 
it is exactly four people, which means it's four point oh 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 forever. Therefore, it has infinite significant figures. And this will become important when we start doing calculations. So it's very important. Any number you count is exact. It's an exact number, and therefore, you could put all the zeros in the universe after the decimal point, and it would still not be enough zeros uh, to represent how exact that number is. So it has infinite sig figs. And the same thing is true when you have defined values. In other words, somebody has set in stone a value as being exact. And some values look exact, like when we're talking about 1,000 meters in one kilometer. It's exactly 1,000 meters in one, exactly one kilometer. So both of those numbers have infinite sig figs. It's 1,000.000 forever meters equals 1.000 forever kilometers. They're exact. They both have infinite sig figs. The same is true of four quarts equals a gallon. Uh, the same is true when you write it as a conversion factor, uh, either simply like this, 12 inches per foot. It's exactly 12 inches in exactly one foot. It's not approximately 12. It doesn't have two sig figs. It has infinite sig figs. Uh, there are some numbers that don't look like they're exact because they were defined. Years ago, uh, an inch was actually redefined as being exactly 2.54 centimeters. The one inch looks like it has one sig fig, but it, it's exactly one inch, so it has infinite sig figs. And the 2.54 centimeters looks like it has three sig figs, but it is exact. It's 2.54000 forever, so it has infinite sig figs. The same is true of 60 minutes to an hour, or 60 seconds to a minute, as well as other numbers that clearly don't look like they're, they're defined. They look like they're measured. Here's one. Avogadro's number, which we'll talk more about in Unit 5, it is defined as being exactly 6.022140076 times 10 to the 23 power. And while it looks like it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 digits, 9 sig figs, all the digits after that last 6 are zeros forever, even past the decimal point. And therefore, it ha each of these numbers has infinite sig figs. Here's a little practice quiz for you. Uh, you're going to uh, look at each value, and you'll notice these are all in grams, so they're, they're measurements here, but they didn't have to be. And you're going to tell how many significant digits. Well, we have 458 grams. Well, that's easy. All of them are non-zero, so it's three significant digits. Whereas 450, that zero is a trailing zero on when there's no decimal place, when there's no decimal point, and therefore only the four and the five count. In other words, when somebody says 450 grams, they mean that it was closer to 450 than it was to 460 or 440. If I had put a decimal place after that, then we could have trusted the zero, but with, there's no decimal point there, therefore we only count the four and the five as significant. 4085 grams. As you can see, the zero is trapped, therefore it's counted. So that would be four significant digits. And you'll notice the color coding here. It's green if it's significant, it's red if it's not significant. 40,800 grams. Well, that first zero is trapped, so that counts. So everything between the four and the eight must be significant. But those other trailing zeros without a decimal place, they don't count. So three sig figs for that one as well. And the same thing with the next example, 485, zero. Zero is a trailing zero without a decimal point, and therefore it's three significant digits. So what do you think about this one? 4850 decimal place, G. Well, remember the decimal point tells you everything significant to the left of it, and therefore we count all of them. The next example, 4850.0, well, remember the overall rule. If I didn't have to write that zero, that last zero, and I did, well, then it must have been significant. So if that last zero is significant and the four is clearly significant, then everything between them must be significant. And therefore, 
all of these are significant. 0 0.0485. Well, we know the 485 are significant, obviously. So the question is, are the other zeros? Well, the first zero is there really to for for looks more than anything. We don't really consider that zero. If that's there uh, consi as considered as good form in writing the number. So the zero after the decimal place, do we count that? Well, the fact is we don't count that. It's a placekeeper. It's there just to tell us where to start writing the four, eight, five at. So we had to put that there. It's not significant. And if you look at the next example, you'll see the same situation. Those two zeros right after the decimal point have to be there. Those are placekeepers. The other zero between the four and the eight, that's a trapped zero, so that's counted. So that has four significant digits. So now we're going to combine some things here. We have 40.0048050. Well, we know that, that trap zeros are going to count. So that means the first three and the fourth zero must be significant. And the very last zero, we didn't have to write it, but we did. It must be adding to the precision of the number, and therefore all of these digits are significant. And the last example, we have some digits that we didn't have to write, the last two zeros. We had a zero that's trapped, the zero between the four and the eight. And then we have these other zeros before the four. Well, those zeros are placekeepers. All of them are placekeepers, and therefore we don't count those, so all the other digits are significant. So if you look at this first scientific notation example, 9 times 10 to the 2, well, I've already shown you it's one significant digit because there's only the 9 there. How do we know that's significant? Well, first of all, it's not 0, but the real answer is every digit in a coefficient is significant. So 9 times 10 to the 2 has a 9. There's one digit there, so it's one significant digit. 1 times 10 to the minus 1 is also one significant digit. 5.00 times 10 to the 3, we have to trust all of them or they wouldn't be written in scientific notation. 5.0 times 10 to the 3, the same exact value, but only two significant digits. There's no ambiguity here. Now, how would you write that as a decimal? There is no way to show that as a decimal. You could write 500 with no decimal point, which would look like one sig fig, or you could write 500 with a decimal point, as shown right above that, which has three sig figs, but there's no way to display 5.0 times 10 to the 3 as a decimal. You could write it as 500 and make a note that two of those digits, the five and the first zero, are significant, but there's no uh, exact way to show this as a decimal. 1.000 times 10 to the minus 2, well, all four of those digits are significant, and we would write that as 0 0.02, oops, sorry, 0 0.02, and I'm going to show this on the screen. Uh, let's get the marker here, and you would show this as There, 0 0.02, I'm sorry, let's start that again. You would say 0 0.01, so that's telling us where to put the 1 at in the second decimal place after the decimal. But we have these other three zeros telling us those are significant as well, so we must show those in the actual decimal format. So we can show these zeros. Let's look at the next example, 5.622 times 10 to the minus 4. Well, all of these are significant, and of course, we would write this as 0, 0.000, and we start the 5 in the fourth decimal place. And then we just continue writing the other digits that are there, the 5622. If we look at the next example, 3.7000 times 10 to the minus 10, well, all five digits are significant. 
6.00 times 10 to the 6th. Again, all three of these digits are significant. And again, there is no way to exactly represent this in decimal. We could say 6 million, because that's what this number is. But the fact is, you've told me that you trust these first three digits. So you might make a note that way, but there's no obvious way how to show it in a decimal format that you trust the first three digits as opposed to just the six. And this last one, 2.40100 uh, times 10 to the 1, well, that's going to be all of those digits are significant. Therefore, it's six significant digits. And this number would be rewritten at, in decimal as 24, because 10 to the 1 is 10. So 2.4 times 10 is 24. But it's 24.01. And we have to write these remaining digits, because we trust all of these. All six of these are significant. Four eggs. Well, remember, that's a counted number. So it's exactly four eggs, and therefore it has infinite sig figs. I'll delete these notes here. 60 minutes per hour. Well, it's not about 60 minutes per hour. It's not that we've estimated it's 60 minutes per hour. It's that we've defined it as being exactly 60 minutes in an hour, and therefore that's also a infinite sig figs because it's an exact number. The speed of light has been defined as 299,792,458 meters per second. They used to measure it every year and get a better and better number. And after a while, people said, let's stop doing that and just define it as this exact number. So this is also infinite significant digits. It looks like nine, but it's infinite. It's exactly that value. And let's stop here and we'll continue on with rounding numbers in, and uh, and yes.